Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a problem called reschedule meetings for maximum free time too. It sounds a bit like a calendar nightmare, but don't worry. The goal is pretty simple. We want to find the biggest possible break we can get in our schedule by moving just one meeting. Let's break it down together. So here's the deal. We're given a total duration for an event and a set of meetings with their start and end times. These meetings are already nicely scheduled so they don't overlap. We have one special power. We can pick up at most one of these meetings and move it somewhere else. The catch is, the meeting has to keep its original duration, and it must stay within the event's total time, without bumping into any other meetings. Our job is to figure out the absolute longest continuous free time slot we can create by making our one move. Let's use the example from the problem to make this concrete. We have an event from time 0 to 5, with two meetings. One is from time 1 to 2, and the other from 3 to 5. Initially, the free time slots are from 0 to 1, and from 2 to 3. The longest of these is just one unit long. Now let's use our special power. Suppose we decide to move the first meeting, the one from 1 to 2. It has a duration of 1. The other meeting, from 3 to 5, is now the only fixed event. This leaves a huge free chunk of time from 0 all the way to 3. We can put our duration 1 meeting anywhere in there. A smart move would be to place it right next to the other meeting say, from time 2 to 3. If we do that, our meetings are now back to back. This leaves a single large free time slot from 0 to 2. The length of this is 2, which is much better than the one we started with. The core strategy here is to not get overwhelmed by all the possibilities. Instead, let's be systematic. We'll go through each meeting one by one and pretend it's the one we've chosen to reschedule. For each meeting we pick, we'll calculate the absolute best free time we can create. After we've done this for every single meeting, we just look at all our results and pick the biggest one. That's our answer. Okay, so for any meeting we choose to move, it falls into one of two categories. The first is that the meeting is movable. This means it's short enough that we can pick it up and slot it into a completely different free period somewhere else on the timeline. The second case is that the meeting is, well, stuck. It's just too long to fit into any other single gap. In this situation, our only option is to shuffle it around within the free space that already surrounds it. Recognizing these two cases is the key to solving this efficiently. To figure out which meetings are movable, we can do a clever pre-computation step. We'll use a Boolean array, let's call it Q, to keep track. We'll do two passes. First, we'll scan through the meetings from left to right, keeping a running tally of the largest free gap we've seen so far. Then, we'll do the same thing, but from right to left. After these passes, for any meeting, if its duration is smaller than or equal to the largest gap we found before it, or the largest gap we found after it, we know it can be moved. We'll mark it as true in our queue array. Now we're ready for the final calculation. We'll loop through our meetings one last time. For each meeting, we identify the space it lives in, bounded by its neighbors, which we can call left and right. Then we check our queue array. If the flag for this meeting is true, it means we can move it completely out of the way, making that whole left to right space free. If the flag is false, the meeting is stuck. We can still improve things by consolidating the free time around it. The new single free slot will have a length equal to the total space, minus the duration of the meeting itself. We just do this for every meeting and hold on to the best result. All right, here's the Python code that puts all those ideas together. It might look a little intimidating at first glance, but it's just implementing the logic we've discussed. We'll walk through the two main sections of the code next. This first block of code is our pre-computation step. We initialize our queue array and two trackers, T1 for the max gap from the left and T2 for the max gap from the right. The loop does both passes at once. For the forward pass, notice that we first check if the current meeting fits into T1, which holds the max gap found before this point. Then we update T1 with the gap right before the current meeting. The second half of the loop does the exact same logic, but for the backward pass, using T2 and a backward index. By the end of this loop, our Q array correctly tells us which meetings are movable. This is the second part of the code, where we calculate the result. We initialize our result variable, risens, to zero. Then we loop through each meeting from index zero to n. Inside the loop, we first figure out the left and right boundaries. Then comes the simple if-else logic we talked about. We check the Q array at index i. If it's true, we calculate the potential free time as the entire gap. If it's false, we take that gap and subtract the meeting's duration. 
We update our result with the maximum value we've seen, and after the loop finishes, we return it. So how efficient is this approach? The time complexity is big O of n, where n is the number of meetings. This is because we just have two separate loops that each run through the n meetings, which is a linear operation. The space complexity is also big O of n. This is driven by the Q array we create, which needs to store a Boolean value for each of the n meetings. So to wrap it all up, what are the big lessons here? First, when a problem seems to have too many possibilities, try to simplify it by iterating through a set of choices. In our case, choosing which meeting to move. Second, don't be afraid to use a pre-computation step, answering a key question, like, is this meeting movable? Ahead of time made our final logic much cleaner. And finally, the real breakthrough was identifying those two distinct scenarios for a meeting, either it's movable, or it's stuck. This turned a complex problem into a series of simple calculations. I hope that breakdown made sense. If this explanation helped you out, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, and maybe subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions or a different way to solve it, drop a comment below. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll see you in the next one.